Adobe has recently announced Adobe Spark for Education. This is very exciting news, and it uh, will really help to just make it easier for teachers and students to be able to use the Adobe Spark products in their classrooms, and it addresses some of the issues with students that were under age 13 as far as being able to access the, uh, the product. And it also provides us with uh, many of the, the premium features for free as educators. So um, we're very excited about the announcement, but I feel like there has been a little bit of confusion on how to go about um, having uh, students log in. So our admin team has already gone and done, and done the through the administration guide and uh, set up the logins to sync with Google. However, in my opinion, it doesn't really work the way that you would think it would work. Um, so as, as you can see here, I'm logged in with this uh, account here with Frodo um, in, into Google here. And what you have to do is if you are on the Adobe Spark page, so just spark.adobe.com, you need to come and click on the login button up here. And then what it does is it takes you to this uh, login screen. Now, from what I can tell, what happens is if you click on continue with Facebook, continue with Google, or sign up with email, all of those first three options are, will take you to basically the consumer version of Adobe Spark. So if your students do that, A, if they were under 13, it will kick them out of the system because they'll have to enter their birthday, and B, they won't get the, uh, the free premium features with it. So um, what you need to do is your students need to click on Login with Adobe ID. Now, like I said, for basically all other educational applications, we click on continue with Google and it just logs them in and that works. But in this case, we actually need to direct them away from that. As far as I can tell, if somebody knows something better or can explain this, or maybe we can get Adobe to kind of improve this process, but they do need to come here and click on login with Adobe ID. And then they need to type their email address up here. And so what that's going to do is after they've typed their email address, it's going to identify um, their domain name in this, um, in this case right here and once they are done typing that in they won't even have to do a, a password or anything um, if they click out of that box it will automatically start redirecting them to the sign in page and since I'm already logged into Google it's gonna go get my Google login and log me in here so and that uh, you can see that I'm logged in up here and then I would have access to Adobe Spark so basically they need to bypass the Google login type their email address, and then the Google login will happen in the background. And this would be the same experience as if they were on a Chromebook. Um, that That's how it would work there as well, too, since the Chromebook, they're automatically logged in. Now we can pop over to this other screen here, and you can see that I'm in this case, in this browser, I'm not logged into any Google account. So I'll just show you what it looks like when you do it here as well. So you click the login again. Again, you skip the Google login. You click login with Adobe ID. I'm going to type in um, the username again here and it redirects uh, as well it, it recognizes that um, URL and redirects out of that password and then it does ask you to sign in with your Google account so you do have to type the email a second time you have to type the password And then now I've been able to log in with the same user um, in the demonstration account here again. So um, from what I can tell, that is the process to me as a little bit backwards from all the other ways that we log in with Google. Um, but I hope this helps and makes sense for um, getting your students to be able to log in and use Adobe Spark. Thanks.